piccolissimi impianti perché una piccola casa di campagna li scaricavano noi in molto più. Ok, are we ready? Yeah? I think so. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right, so uh, now I'm going to focus on the kitchen sink system. So many uh, health uh, authorities look at kitchen sink water as black water, not gray water. Um, I prefer the classification of kitchen sink water being dark gray water. Okay. Um, and the, the reason kitchen sink water is sometimes classified as black water is because of all the organic matter we put down the drain. So to make it easier to work with, safer to work with, don't put all the organic matter down the drain. Put it into the compost bin next to the sink. Okay. So I, um, th this is how I discharge my kitchen sink water into the landscape. Okay. Uh, I would only uh, recommend this with households that are very conscious of what they send down the drain and are very engaged in their system. If I were installing a kitchen sink system for a client that didn't think that much about the system, this would not be appropriate. Instead, I would do a system I'll tell you about in just a moment. Because here, the water goes directly into a mulched basin, just like a regular gray water system. Um, but if people are sending everything down the drain, they will soon get a pile of sludge. Okay. Um, I check this every week or every two weeks, and I cover any material coming out with more mulch, or I turn, I turn the mulch. And here is a great sign that it's working. When I reach in and turn up the soil, I don't know if you can see it, but it's full of earthworms. They love it. Okay, there's so much life. And when I see all that life and how healthy the plants are, I can't help but ask myself, why is this sometimes illegal? <laughs> okay. Um, so in a cold climate, you could do a similar system where you discharge the, gray, the dark gray water into a planting bed in the greenhouse where you have the kitchen sink. Yeah, greenhouse house, yeah. Now, if I was doing a kitchen sink system for somebody who was not very conscious, I would discharge into the chambers, okay? So there's much less chance of anybody coming into contact with what comes down the pipe. And here, uh, we have the inspection ports, and when you reach into the inspection port, what do you get? Earthworms! <laughs> Tons of earthworms! Okay. Another advantage of this system could be that you would lose less water to evaporation because you're, you're getting more discharge beneath the surface. And it is irrigating pomegranate, grapes, perennial chilies, uh, herbs like rosemary. Okay. And now it's all much bigger. Okay. 
these systems can fail. Fail. Okay. So uh, here is where this chamber was and still is. It was covered in mulch in a wet climate in Oregon. Okay. Um, and after six years, it started to clog. So they dug up the chamber. This is why you never plant on top. You want to be able to get under it. And uh, they found that it had filled up with earthworm castings. Okay? So the earthworms had eaten everything that came out and they had filled it up with the poop, the manure of earthworms. That is amazing soil. It's so good. So, and then the roots had grown through the earthworm castings. I see that as a beneficial problem because that is highly fertile, harvestable material. So they just cleared out the castings, put the chamber back, covered it up, and everything's good. Okay? All right? Um, but I have installed these systems in drier climates like this, and I'm still at 10 years, no problem. So it's all relative. Also notice, this is a pretty narrow chamber. If you do the wider chamber, it will have a longer life. Um, okay. So, uh, if you want to get a permit for this system and to do it legally in Arizona, in my state, you need one more piece of the system. You need a mini septic tank, which we call, um, oh, what's the name again? Uh, it's, forgot the name, like, interceptor, uh, infiltrate. We call it an interceptor chamber. Uh, the name doesn't matter. It's a mi mini septic tank. So if people, don't think at all about what they send down the drain. There's lots of oil, lots of grease. The oil floats to the top. The grease floats to the top. The solids drop out. It's a, yeah, it's a mini septic tank. And the, the water comes in below the grease level, and then it exits below the grease level, so you get clearer water to your chamber, to the interceptor chamber. We have a different name in Italian. Okay. Because we, we call this... Uh, grease trap? It's just grease trap. Grease trap. Grease trap. Yeah, so grease trap. Or what you said. Okay. Um, and if you were going to do a commercial kitchen, you definitely want that grease trap because there's so much stuff going down. Um, but for a conscious household, I find very often you can do the system without this. Okay? But you can't, at the moment, you cannot get a permit for the system without this. You need that. In it. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Is there a way to use the upper layer of the, this uh, grease trap? Of, this, of that uh, tank? Use the I mean, upper the upper layer. The to harvest the grease. the grease? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can Is open it and harvest no, it. No, I, I mean, how to use it? Do you know a way to spread maybe somewhere or just composting? I would do composting. Okay. Yeah. Ah, la domanda era se, se c'è un modo di utilizzare la parte che yeah. raccogli da sopra il degrassatore, lui dice comunque il compost. 
I'm on, al compos. Infatti è quello che mi stavo chiedendo. If you don't have too much grease and you don't have the grease trap and all the water goes directly to the chamber, the earthworms and the soil life compost the grease. In fact, a friend has a system, he, his name is Tom Watson. And he calls his system the Watson Wick, or the Watson Infiltrator. And he literally puts a flush toilet directly on top of this. And shits in it and sends everything in there. And it composts in place. And, uh, um, but there's one other thing he has. Around it is not soil, but pumice, volcanic rock, with lots of holes in it. Okay? And then he plants the vegetation in the pumice, or what do you call it? In the pomicha. I said that way. Excuse me, how does he flush? I mean, with water. Yeah. che scarica un vaso, insomma un vaso di water e va direttamente lì, no? E allora gli ho chiesto come fa a scaricare? E niente, con secchi d'acqua. Yeah, with uh, buckets. And uh, he has installed that system for a uh, small hotel with 19 toilets. And uh, it's just in a, a huge fo food forest around it. Um, works great, but it's not legal. Okay. All right. Uh, if you want this diagram, it's in my volume two book. I have an appendix on this system. Uh, this is an installation of this system in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And here is the mini septic tank and all the chambers. Now, that is a lot of plastic. It's four chambers and the septic tank. Is that what you need for just one household kitchen sink? No, usually not. That's too much. But the homeowner here wanted to connect the shower water with the kitchen sink water because both pipes in the house were very close. But that did the horrible thing of mixing kitchen sink black water with shower gray water. So now all the water needs to be treated like kitchen sink water. And so we had to use way more plastic. In my opinion, it would have been much better to keep the shower water and kitchen sink water separate. And then we only would have needed one, maybe two chambers, that's it. And then the, the, kitchen, the shower water could go to a different place. Okay, any questions on that? All right. Um, this is a friend's house. This is all irrigated with rainwater and kitchen sink water in a drier climate than this. They do a lot of cooking. Yeah, okay. um, uh, and it's all fertilized with human manure. But that's a talk after lunch. <laughs> This is in Queensland, Australia, a much wetter climate. Uh, very simple system here. The rainwater from the roof goes to a, a barrel. That's all the drinking water for this small house, for this homeowner. And then via gravity, the water goes to the kitchen sink 
to drink, cook, wash. And then the water comes down the drain to the mulched basin with the banana plant, which will then provide more food for the kitchen and shade for the kitchen. But that's the whole system. Very simple. Oh, and he's planted other bananas around this for his shower. So this shower bag, solar shower bag. So he is growing his privacy screen out of more bananas um, that he will then eat while he showers. Okay. But very simple, effective system for that climate. Uh, when you have a kitchen sink with two basins, if you like to use a, a lot of fat and whatnot, mm -hmm. maybe you would choose for one basin to always go to the sewer. Your soap basin, your fat basin. And then your rinse basin always go to the landscape. This is easier to use. So here, this basin always goes to the sewer. Whoop, no, sorry. This basin always goes to the sewer. This basin can go to the landscape or the sewer, depending on where the valve goes. Right. Then in this example, they have a very inexpensive valve. So all the, the water goes to the sewer when this valve is closed. But when this valve is open, all the water goes to the landscape. Just another way of doing it. But I don't like this there. Do, do you know what that is? That's the chipper shredder for the, everything that goes down the drain. We call it a, uh, what do we call it? Disposal. Yeah, disposal. Hanno un coso che trita tutti i rifiuti solidi che scendono nel lavandino di cucina. Bucce di verdure, ci metti tutto. Tutto butti giù. No, I don't know. Do you use it as compost? No, no, no. That, that's people are just throwing everything away eh, when they do tutto that. laggiù. Sì, ma proprio ci schiaffano giù tutto. So I remove this. So then I discourage people putting more organic matter down the drain. And this also consumes electricity. And I'd rather put it in the compost pile. Okay. For a kitchen sink, when you want to uh, put in a valve to direct the water to the landscape, you might find that your pipe from the two basins is too low. So you can cut it and raise it like this to give yourself more room to put in the three-way valve. And it's important that you have the three-way valve after the P-trap and on or after the vent stack. It's best to place the three-way valve down slope or downstream of the P-trap and the vent stack. Do you 
downslope meaning after it and yeah. after it. After it and below it. Both. See a dog? Okay. Because if it's going up slope, it's bad plumbing. The, any time you have water going to the sewer, you always need a P-trap and a vent. You don't have vents? Okay. Okay. So let me show the next slide. Uh, whoops. So uh, here we have a P-trap and no vent, I guess like it is in, Ita in yeah, Italy. Okay. So this can work, and apparently it works here. <laughs> but if you notice when you are draining your sink or your bathtub and the water starts to burp or gurgle, it's just like burp, 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 and going slow, that's usually because you don't have a vent. So if you want the water to go down the drain more quickly, you add a vent. Okay, that's why we have a vent, primarily. All right. Uh, ah, I want to tell you too. So not having a vent is considered radical plumbing in the United States but obviously it works. Uh, you can also do a drain with no P-trap. It's not legal, but it's radical plumbing. And there is a whole chapter in this book on radical plumbing. Plumbing that works, but is not legal with code. Okay? And it's the type of plumbing you will find in the majority of the world where there are no plumbing codes. Okay. Okay, let's get by that. Um, well, I would, yeah, that's good enough. So if we, can I put a three-way valve um, here? If I want a three-way valve that lets me send water to the landscape or the sewer, can I put it there? No. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Because this is black water. It's coming from the toilet. So I have to intercept the gray water before it mixes with the black water. So can I put the three-way valve um, here? Why not? Prenderebbe solo l'acqua cioè di della vasca. Because it only gets the water from the bathtub. Oh, okay. Well, true, but we can still do it. Yeah, maybe it's not as efficient, but we can still do it. Sì. Okay. Is there any other reason why we might not want to put the three-way valve there? Huh? Yeah, but we don't have a choice here. Everything's under the floor. What? this place. It, it would work in Italy, but it wouldn't work in the United States. What is this tube vent? What this means? What's this tube? This is the vent, the air vent. 
So this is probably confusing here because I've just learned you don't have vents. <laughs> so if you don't have a vent, then it's fine to put it there. But in the US where we have vents, you would want to put it after or on the vent. Okay? All right. Good. Um, oh, you made me think of something. So, uh, if I was going, okay, I personally always want gray water from a bathtub or a shower if I can get it because that's the highest volume of gray water of any source, okay? And, uh, but um, the bathroom sink is usually the lowest <laughs> volume of gray water. And sometimes it is also the worst quality gray water because toothpaste, it's full of salt if it's baking soda, toothpaste, or whatnot. A lot of salt. So sometimes I don't bother with the bathroom sink. I do everything else. And then that means the bathroom sink is my dedicated sewer sink. So if somebody wants to wash uh, their clothes after working under the car, it's full of oil, they could wash them in the sink. If somebody is dyeing clothes or their hair, they do that in that sink. Um, so uh, I just know there's never a problem for me, for the world, yes, but for me, no, <laughs> putting the water down that drain. Okay? All right. Okay. Uh, could we put a three way valve here? Right here? Hmm? I don't know what tube it is, so we better not put it there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this is coming from the bathtub. So could we put it on there? Yeah, we could put it here in Italy. <laughs> or we could put it here in the United States. Okay. All right because that's the vent. All right. Uh, okay. I'm going to show you this in case any of you try to change building codes or the law here. And I encourage you to try that. Um, We have been successful changing the law in Arizona and other states. And when we started, we did not think it would be possible. I, I don't know how the politics are here, but I've heard stories. <laughs> um, but uh, I have found that the most important thing is just to show up and be at the table where the conversation is occurring. Because uh, I would say 90% of the work is just showing up and being part of the process. And when we legalized gray water harvesting, and when we legalized these simple gravity-fed gray water systems, what was amazing to me is almost none of the policy makers, the plumbing engineers, and the plumbers had ever installed a gray water harvesting system. 
And yet they were making the decisions on was it legal or illegal or how. But they didn't even understand the system. They were just reading the code book and assuming that was the best way. So it was a struggle, but uh, we were able to persevere because we could say again and again, we know this works. We've been installed many of these systems. We have years of data. And we're not leaving the table until we talk about this. And uh, so, uh, all right. So in New Mexico, the, uh, the health department was afraid that if people are harvesting the gray water from all these pipes, what if something were to happen? There would be a clog in the pipe. Would that gray water back up into the house? So they have one additional requirement, and that is this T that is an overflow to the sewer. So if the gray water comes down here, and there is a clog that happens here, the water will back up here into the sewer with gravity. Okay? And now it works. So. But keep in mind, with this gray water system, you have a backup system. You have the sewer system. With a sewer system, there's no backup. Interesting that when you're trying to do things in a simpler, healthier way, sometimes you have to meet more requirements than the conventional way of doing things. And I would like to see sewer systems be required to have a backup. And, and that might be in the form of a gray water system or a compost toilet. Just something to think about. Okay. All right. So, I eat my gray water. I eat my kitchen sink dark gray water. Okay? In the form of the food grown from that water. And... Uh, as I mentioned before, 30, about 30% 30 of the drinking water we consume in a typical house is in the toilet. And by law, we are supposed to plumb drinking water to that toilet. And this is why dogs and my friend Mike drink from the toilet bowl. They know what's in it. Okay, but to me this is crazy that we turn a pristine resource, drinking water, immediately into a dangerous waste, sewage, by shitting in our drinking water. So I would rather turn a waste, like shit, into a safe resource than use drinking water, a resource, transformed into a waste. So after lunch, at the end of the day, if there's time, I will go more into depth on simple compost toilet systems that use n li very little or no water, but no drinking water. Um, but first I want to show, uh, a set. we've been talking about these septic tanks. This is an illustration of it. So your gray water, your black water, comes to a tank. Solids drop out, grease floats to the top, clearer water 
goes to these pipes with holes in them that are in gravel trenches. Okay, that's the typical way of doing it. That's what is here at this site. But again, what I don't like about it is the pipe is too small in diameter. It's easy for roots to grow in and clog it. And you backfill with gravel, which is another material you have to buy, and it's hard to dig in. So you can use this system, but change it slightly by not going into the pipe, but instead go into the chambers we've talked about. And then, if you use the chambers, you can plant between or to the side of the chambers and grow fruit trees with your poop juice. You can get these chambers with uh, angled connectors, so you can place them on contour. Okay. And another system you can do with a septic tank is you can transform it from a system with anaerobic water with no oxygen. So that's what a typical septic tank is. It's just water that's not moving. It's anaerobic. There's, there's not oxygen in it. And this is one reason why it smells so bad. Okay. But we can put a bubbler in it, like you have in a fish tank. And also, you can drop in a uh, inoculant, like a little compost starter. So you change the microorganisms that are in the water. So you have microorganisms that like aerobic conditions instead of anaerobic conditions. And yes, it does require an electric bubbler, but it doesn't take that much power. And this enables you to just turning this to aerobic conditions cleans the water enough in a natural way that you can distribute your, uh, the water coming out of the septic tank just 10 centimeters below the surface with a special drip irrigation line. And so you get the water higher in the soil with more life in it. And, and here on a sloped site, they planted native grasses. It could be other plants. Right on top of the drip irrigation line on contour. So you get grass swales, grass contour swales that help harvest the rainwater and the sediment coming down the slope. I like that. Okay. Another system is a constructed wetlands. And that's where you have a basin lined with plastic, filled with gravel, and riparian plants. The water comes in this side, gets filtered by the life in the gravel and the plants, is caught in the tank or the pipe, and then used in the landscape. Um, in wet climates, this is a good system. In dry climates, sometimes it's a bad system because you have to have riparian plants, wetland plants, in it that consume a lot of water and evapotranspire the water. The reason this system was developed was for people in wet soil, wet climates, that wanted a septic system 
but could not get rid of the water. The soil was already too wet. It didn't perk. So they instead get rid of the water by evaporating it through the plants. Okay. Now, some people use this system to filter the water enough that the water that comes out they can use to irrigate fruit trees. I like that idea. But, but if you are in a dry climate and you don't have enough water coming into the system, especially in summer when people go on vacation and stop sending water down the drain, the system might die because there's not enough water. Because these plants are wetland plants. They always have to have their feet in water. And this example in Jordan, this was the, oh, I saw many of these systems. This was the only one with some living plants in it. All the rest, the plants had died. Because when the family went on vacation, the plants died and they never replanted it. So it, it was a failed system. The other thing was this particular system was dependent on a pump to pump the water out. And the pumps were always breaking. So you just had this festering water that um, would then overflow unfiltered. So nasty. <laughs> OK. So, uh, but why did they do it? They did it because in Jordan, in much of the Middle East, your biggest water, gray water source is the kitchen sink because there's so much cooking going on. That's why the food is so good. Okay. So they mix, and they mix the kitchen sink water with all the other gray water. So I think a better system would be all the other gray water goes to a different gravity-fed system. And only the kitchen sink here, if they want to use this, or do a kitchen sink system like I showed you. Because then it's not dependent on wetland plants in this very dry climate. Any questions on any of that? You guys dying for lunch? I am. OK. Um, all right. So that's actually it. Um, congratulations. You guys made it through. OK. Uh, unless there's any last questions. Yeah. Oh, no. It's just stretching. OK. All righty. Um, so uh, after lunch, uh, we will break you up into groups. And you will all, as different groups, assess how much gray water is coming from different sources in the house, if that gray water is accessible or not. And then you will do the percolation test where you think you want to direct the water in the landscape. And then you will size a basin or chambers or something else large enough to handle the water flow. And we will also discuss how you figure out what that water can irrigate, how many plants you could plant with that water. OK? So my goal is, at the end of today, you can assess any site for its gray water potential and design a system for it, and, uh, and also know how to build the system. Unfortunately, we will not build a system with the gray water for a couple reasons. Uh, the primary one is uh, there's still work being done around the house uh, that needs to be finished before it's ready for a gray water system. Um, the second one is uh, um, we need to look into the legality of gray water harvesting system here because this is a, a lot of people come to the site for courses like this. So um, just playing it safe on both sides. 
Okay, so uh, let's do the two hour lunch, I guess. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for sticking in there. Yeah.